Hey Judy Garland fans, I'm on the street where Judy Garland grew up from 1927 to 1934. The reason why I started with that is I'm assuming that she probably went to that little school. It was obviously an elementary, now it's the Lancaster School District Administration Building. Well, we're coming up to 1207 Cedar Avenue in Lancaster, California, which if you are at all interested in coming, the address was changed to 44665 Cedar Avenue. And on this corner right here was once Oak and they changed that to Newsom. So if you're at all interested, here is the house. And if you come, you won't be confused. On that corner, caddy corner, straight ahead, was the childhood home of the Honey Voice Sweet Angel, Miss Judy Garland, who graced us for 47 years on this earth. Unfortunately, fortunately she, unfortunately she died at a young age, at 47, of a barbiturate overdose in Chelsea, London, in 1969. There's a debate in the, on the internet exactly which house is the original house. Uh, there's a couple of pictures. Some say it's that one right there, 1207, and then some people say it's the second one right there. The family also says that thousands of people come here uh, a year to ask, knock at the door and ask for a tour of the house. So let me go a little forward and get a good shot of this house and the other house. Too bad this van is here. And here's the second house. So there's a debate, there's a controversy, nobody really knows which house it was. Uh, according to the family, the Moffats who bought the house, uh, they said that they've been trying to get the mayor and the city council to change the ordinance to turn this into a museum in, in memory of uh, uh, Miss Judy Garland, whose original name was Frances Ethel Garland. And, I mean, I'm sorry, Frances Ethel Gum. And she was uh, named after both her parents, Ethel, her mom, and her dad, Frank or Frances. She had three sisters, the Gum sisters, and let me tell you why they moved here. Because the father wanted to buy a movie theater, and he, had, he did have one in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, where the family was from. But he was able to find a, a cheap uh, movie theater slash vaudeville theater where he could showcase his three little daughters, the Gum sisters. And uh, he showcased them across the country, also in vaudeville. And uh, the three sisters, if you're at all interested, uh, Baby was uh, the nickname of uh, Judy. And uh, Susie was the oldest. That was her nickname. Her real name was Mary Jane. And uh, the, the, the middle one was Jimmy. Her, name, her real name was Dorothy Virginia. Well, uh, okay, getting back to the story of the Gum Sisters. They got their name from the impresario uh, Georgie Jessel, who said that they all looked like a pretty garland of flowers. And then where they got the name Judy for, for Frances is that they said that she named herself after a song that she liked uh, with Hoagie, by Hoagie Carmichael called Judy. And if you're at all interested on the YouTube, on my channel, I have uploaded the house where she lived when she was uh, filming The Wizard of Oz. And she got signed in 1934 to a seven year contract at 13 at MGM and she made 36 films and she did nine films with mickey rooney and uh, she did a few movies in the andy hardy series with mickey rooney and uh, when she was at uh mgm she went to school there on the lot and she unfortunately she was considered the ugly duckling of the other girls because she was uh, uh her her fellow students was elizabeth elizabeth taylor lana turner and uh Ava Gardner and unfortunately they say her uh, her emotional uh, psychology was damaged because they said that first off she didn't feel like she was ever pretty enough and then they said that Louis B. Mayer used to call her call her my little hunchback I can't believe it that little that ogre calling her the little hunchback but she got wind of that and it damaged her uh, her persona they said for years and then they said that during that grueling schedule of constant filming for years 
for years and long, long days. They said that the studio used to uh, give them amphetamines on steroids and then they they give them barbiturates to uh, put them to sleep. And they said that that's how she got addicted to barbiturates, which ultimately led to her death. Uh, one thing about Judy, they never knew what to do with her because she, was, she wasn't quite the child anymore. And uh, they couldn't, they couldn't, of course, film, uh, put, put her in films like Shirley Temple. So finally, she came to the attention of the studio execs by uh, singing to Clark Gable at his birthday. And uh, they, I guess they didn't really realize she could really sing. And the song that she sang was, uh, You Made Me Love You, I Didn't Want to Do It, the Clark Gable. And then they had her sing that in 1938 in Broad Broadway Melody of 1938. Okay, and getting back to this, here's the house. And like I said, they wanted to make a museum of this house. And like I said, I don't know the discrepancy, the debate. Maybe one day we'll see it on the internet. I couldn't find it. I don't know if it's this house or this house. But as you can see, obviously they turned this into a child care. And I think it's ironic that they'll give them a license to uh, have a child care, but the mayor and the Philistines and the city council won't give them a change of uh, ordinance to turn this into a, uh, a museum to the sweet angel, Miss Judy Garland. She died in Chelsea, London, like I said before, I think at 47 of an overdose of the barbiturates that she was forced to take as a young girl. And she was married to a guy named Mickey Deans. She had been married to him for about two years. And she was, uh, she had been married five times. And Liza Minnelli said that when they interviewed her, I think in the early 70s, she said that they, uh, that she used to sing to President Kennedy over the rainbow over on, on the phone. Because after a grueling week, she would always tell Liza, I'm gonna call Jack and I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna talk to him and then she would just use uh, use Mr. The, Mr. Kennedy, the president, to get all her uh, exhaustion and her aggravation of the week by talking to him. And uh, according to the author, that uh, the, the person that wanted to check that fact, they uh, she was told by Carolyn Kennedy that she didn't know if that was true, but to go ahead and check with Dave Powers, the the presidential aide who would know, who used to be in the Oval Office all the time with President Kennedy, he said, yeah, that it really happened. And he would also put the, hold the phone out so Dave Powers could hear. And also Evelyn Lincoln, uh, President Kennedy's private secretary also verified that fact. And in the back here, they said that there's nine apartments that they built and there's the backyard. Maybe that's the house. And maybe you could visualize the Gum Sisters playing here. And, uh, so let me go around again and uh, this is a two blocks away from the Sierra Highway where uh, Frank Gum owned the Valley Theater which was unfortunately burned down in 1953. So let's go around again and get a pretty good idea and a perspective of what it looked like. And most of the homes are from that era, the 1920s and 30s still in this general area. And incidentally, if you're at all interested, Frank Zappa grew up here and Captain Beefheart, Don Van Vliet. And uh, let's, just, let's just hope that this is the, this is the right house. And uh, they, like I said, they get thousands of people a year coming to look at this house. And uh, I just want to get this for posterity also because they said that the mayor of Lancaster, if you can believe it, he wanted to raise this whole block I can't believe it. And uh, the Philistines of these idiots that run these city halls, always tearing down cultural, cultural landmarks. And uh, here you go. And I can visualize and feel uh, Frances and uh, Susie and uh, Jimmy. I can see them here now as little girls playing and the dad always getting them ready to appear at his little movie theater and uh, eventually move on to vaudeville and then superstardom for for uh, Judy okay 
hope you guys uh, uh, watch my channel and you can see uh, where Judy lived while filming uh, The Wizard of Oz in 1939. So thank you and please subscribe to my channel. Okay. And uh, this is, may we, we just thank, thank the gods up above that there was Judy once graced this earth with that wonderful voice that's made millions and millions of people happy. May she be in a better place. Thank you for watching.